Hi, in this fourth video, I'm gonna discuss you know, some things you need to think about and four key sets of questions you're gonna to need to ask yourself. And I'll share with you as well some of our story of how we selected our home up in Estes Park. So I'm assuming at this point in time, you've decided on which town or city you wanna buy your vacation home in. Now the next thing you gotta go, okay, where? in town or near town do you want to buy? Do you want to buy right near downtown or near the slopes? Or do you want to be a little bit away from all the noise and congestion? And then you go, how far away do you want to be? Is it just a half mile, a mile? Maybe it's 10 miles you want to be further away. So those are things you have to consider. The second thing you got to consider, okay, what type of property do you want to buy? Do you want to buy a condo, a townhouse, or a single family home? And so just realize condos are usually always closer to the action, whether it be the ski slopes or downtown areas. Townhouses can be a little further away, although in Estes Park, we did look at one townhouse that was basically a block from downtown that we really, really liked. Uh, and then single family homes are almost always gonna be quite a ways away from the core area where the action is quote happening. And so, but then you also have to go, okay, do we want a home just a mile or two away? Or do we want to be 10 miles away and truly have a lot of privacy and solitude maybe? Uh, and as you consider this, one thing to remember on condos, because for most of us, we've been living in single family homes for a very long time, and we've maybe forgotten what it's like to live in an apartment because that's really sort of what a condo is. And so you may have, you'll probably have neighbors above you below you and to each side of you. And you just may go, wow, I forgot. I don't, don't really like that style of living. So it's one of the things to consider, you know, and on a townhouse, you're gonna have, you know, a neighbor on at least one side of you and maybe two sides of you. So it's just another thing to realize, you know, with a single family home is, okay, how big of a lot or how much space do you really wanna have or feel like you need to have? Uh, you know, like our home we bought, it's at the end of a little cul-de-sac, sits on about three quarters of an acre. And we have four, see, I guess five neighbors' homes we can see from our home, but four of them are basically covered in trees. So it gave us that solitude and we just get great, great mountain views from our home. Another thing to realize, especially in mountain towns, you may have to be really open to the type of property you're buying. Uh, a, because there's not a lot of properties to look at. Uh, second is just know this, I remember one home that we actually wrote a contract on. It looked like a single family home. It had a, a garage and that garage was, was attached to the garage of another home. So it lived like a single family home, but it legally was a condo. And if we had excluded condos from our search list, we never would have seen it. So you have to be really open in your searches because you may find a gem. A third question you gotta ask yourself is, are you gonna work from your vacation home? Millions of people are now doing that across the country of where they're working from their vacation home, maybe all the time or at least some of the time. And so, you know, three things you really gotta look at. One is internet speed. One of the reasons why we chose our home in Estes Park is because our neighborhood was one of the first ones to receive one gigabyte internet service. A second thing is cell phone service. Like when we were, after we wrote the contract on the home and I saw when we were doing our inspection, crap, there was basically no cell phone service from Verizon at our new house. So I called Verizon and asked, okay, what can we do? Because I'm gonna be working from here. And they said, you can buy this little booster box. It's about 300 bucks. And I got it and it makes a huge difference. We went from zero to one bar to four to five bars all the time. You know, a third thing to consider is, okay, does the home have the space you need? Does it have, you know, the quietness that you may want? I know like with the home we bought, uh, it didn't come with an office. We had to create it. We ended up turning the family room that was downstairs into a third bedroom and an office because it's a big room, at least 16 by 16 feet. And so that's where my office is and I can have the quietness that I need, but also still see the mountains from my office or I can head upstairs, see the mountains from the dining room or I can head out onto the deck or our back patio 
and see mountains. And it's amazing to be able to work in the mountains of where it's just so much more relaxing, you know, of where I feel so much more peace and solitude and just, it's an amazing feeling. My wife has definitely noticed that in me as well. The fourth question you really gotta consider is, what is truly important to you as you buy a vacation home? And I'll be honest, you may not know when you really get, when you're just getting started. It took my wife, ah, my wife and I, six to eight weeks to discover this after looking at eight, nine, ten different properties. Of what did we really want? You know, and what kind of you know views did we want? My wife loves the rivers, and there's two rivers in Estes Park, Big Thompson and the Fall River. Did we want to live near one of them? Because my wife loves the sound of water. Or did we want to have, or was it more important to have mountain views? But then you go, okay, how good of mountain views do you want? Do you want just peekaboo mountain views? Do you want obstructed mountain views or unobstructed mountain views? You know, you got to consider, okay, do you want some privacy? Do you want quietness or solitude? Like one of the things we've discovered with our house that we just absolutely love, we'll sit on our back patio that faces Prospect Mountain, and we can hear the eagles and falcons and hawks flying up in the rocks, you know, a couple hundred feet from our house. And it's just su such an amazing experience, but it takes time for you to learn that about what do you truly want in your home. And, you know, another thing I just, you know, credit Nicole, our realtor for doing this is the home we bought, we're about three miles from downtown Estes. And what's really cool is we can go e either direction around Prospect Mountain, we can go to the west or we can go to the east to get into downtown. And this is really important in the summertime, we, you know, cause Estes Park has over 4 million visitors every year of where it's great because we can go to the west and get up into Rocky Mountain National Park without ever going through downtown, which is a huge benefit for us. And that's one of the, another reason why we love our home and why we bought it. And it just has some incredible views of several different mountains. And so, you know, when I saw the lot and saw the, how it sat, I was like, wow, this is the home. There was one major problem though. The house was 31 years old and it looked even older than that inside. It was in desperate need of a gut remodel. And so we had to spend a ton of money to do that because we remodeled, we changed the floor plan of both bathrooms upstairs. We changed the floor plan downstairs where we turned an old dingy office and a family room into a home theater and into a third bedroom and an office for me and we had to upgrade and change and redo all the electrical, all the plumbing, new flooring, new paint, new drywall. I mean, we basically redid everything in this house. And so, so that was quote, a downside up front, you know, with buying it, because it wasn't in the condition that we needed, but we both, my wife and I both said, this is the house for us, because we love the views, we love the, the, the some privacy we would have, and the quietness and solitude this home would this home would provide as well for us. So it's just gonna take time for you to discover what do you really want in your vacation home and just realize it may take some time, you know, for you to decide and you know, you just need to get out and look. And I would strongly, strongly encourage you to work with a local realtor in that community, wherever you're buying, because they're gonna have so much market knowledge for you that unfortunately a realtor from outside the area just isn't going to have. And that will help you make a much better decisions on where you buy and what you buy when you do buy a vacation home. Uh, and finally, just make sure you're pre-approved with a, a local Colorado lender, you know, like myself, because sometimes lending in the mountains is a little different. Sometimes you'll find homes that have, you know, that are on septic systems and on have a well. And so a lender, you know, who lives in Chicago may not have a flipping clue of how to help you and how to serve you well. So make sure you have a, a you know, that you're pre-approved with a good local lender who can help you, you know, gu and guide you around all those things. And, you know, having a local lender will ensure that you can make quick decisions because realize the real estate markets up in the, in the mountain towns are still very, very strong. And you do have to make a decision quickly and when you write an offer. And so work with someone local 
And if you have questions or just say, hey Lonnie, I wanna talk more, you know, feel free to make a comment below or better yet, just text me. My number is 303-881-6374. And I look forward to talking with you soon.